All right, it's 6.03, let's get started. So good evening and welcome to the Hartford County Public Schools Magnet and Technical Program Information Night. My name again is Robert Limpert. I am the supervisor of Magnet and CT programs for Hartford County Public Schools, and I'll be your host. Tonight, we'll start with a short video presentation highlighting the Magnet and Technical programs Hartford County Public Schools has to offer. After that, I'll come back and review the application process, our timeline, changes to some of our programs, and new opportunities that the CTE office has to offer to students this coming fall. We'll hear from program specific coordinators this evening, and at the end, we'll have an opportunity to answer some of your questions. At any time during the presentation this evening, if you have questions, you'll have the opportunity to post them in the question and answer section. At this time, we're gonna to transition to the video. So I love STEM. Um, I want to be a neurosurgeon and so I've always been involved in sciences, even maths too. My dad is an engineer and so I was like, you know, I want to be surrounded by kids who also love the things I love. What interested me in this program is the fact that I want to be an FBI computer analyst. Um, IB, again, really emphasizes uh, the long-term sustainment of success and traits outside of high school and beyond high school. So with the global mindedness in hand, that applies to a lot of my life and how I gain new perspectives when approaching adversities and new challenges. What interested me in this program was the opportunity to learn about teaching through an internship, which will further help me explore my interest in teaching. So my immediate plan out of high school, I'm not going to be doing too much of these skills as I've committed to the uh, U.S. Army. But when I get out of the Army, I'm planning to become a game warden and actually make sure people are respecting the natural resources, make sure they're doing what they're supposed to so we can ensure that they're going to be here for years to come. Um, I enjoy a lot of the hands-on care that we do as well as learning all the knowledge about body systems and medical terminology that will help me when I go to college. What interested me was that there was a lot of courses and options for things like computer science and Java programming, database building and things like that. And I know that when I get older, I wanted to have a job in those areas. So I wanted to learn some of those things. All right, I wanna welcome folks back have received a couple questions. Um, one of the first ones is tonight's event going to be recorded. We are recording tonight's event. It will be edited and posted by next Monday on the HCPS website. Again, it's hcps.org slash schools slash magnet programs. Again, that website is hcps.org slash schools slash magnet programs. All right, at this point, we're gonna to transition to a PowerPoint with some of our frequently asked questions. Again, here's the HCPS website, hcps.org slash schools slash magnet programs. Please note the highlighted section that does provide a brochure that typically we provide to families during our actual events when we were in person. Unfortunately, due to the COVID restraints and restrictions, we are result, the result is we must do these virtually. Again, that is a downloadable PDF. Also, guidance departments at all middle schools were provided copies of this document. Again, this document is the Information Guide to Magnet and Technical Programs. It does give us a tremendous amount of information related to the events that we talk about tonight, frequently asked questions, contact information, et cetera. So again, that's at HCPS dot org slash schools slash magnet programs. Getting started, as far as what we look at as part of our application process, we look specifically at the GPA or our students grades for middle school experience grades six through eight, standardized tests which have occurred during that time frame when the students were in the middle school time period, teacher endorsements or recommendations from our from your English your math and your science teachers. Those are the recommendations that all students must have and they are eighth grade recommendations. Our activities list, that is activities that students participate in while they are in middle school. 
during that time. It can be both during school. It can be outside school. Um, we do ask that students try to be as specific as possible. However, certain activities do count as the same activity. For example, if your son or daughter is extremely active in athletics and he or she plays soccer in the fall, basketball in the winter, and lacrosse in the spring, we, when reviewing that, look at that as your student being a student athlete. So it isn't valued more for them to be participating in three activities. It is a single activity. Please be as creative as possible with your activities list. If your son or daughter volunteers at church, volunteers at food kitchens, volunteers in the community, helps out within your neighborhood, things such as that, we look at that for the well-roundedness of our students. We also require an essay. Um, the essay basically asks us, asks you to tell us why you want to be a part of our programs. And it is program specific. So it is critical that your son or daughter does address the program they are applying. Each and every year we get students who start to work on their essay and many of the pieces and components of why they want to participate in one program opposed to the other may be similar. However, we want to make sure that when that essay is submitted that they are submitting the correct essay to the right program. Um, it does happen where we get students who are applying for SMA and they submit the IB essay. One program that does not require the essay is our PTECH program at Joppa Town. We also issue, a, uh, we also have assessments that coincide with the Science Math Academy, the International Baccalaureate, and the Natural Resources Agricultural Science Program. Those second round of assessments take place in January. Um, students who are selected for those assessments will be contacted from the program coordinators. The application process itself. All applications are submitted via the HCPS website and it is an online link. The link will open on October 20th. Uh, access to the application itself will be on the HCPS homepage starting on October 20th and also on our link, which I shared multiple times as hcps.org backslash or slash schools slash magna programs. Again, the application will open on October 20th, must be submitted online only. Also on the HCPS slash schools slash Magnum program website, we will have a supporting document, which is the information document, which this is the downloadable PDF that would help you and assist you through the application process itself. During the application, students will have the opportunity to apply to three of our seven Magna programs. Note, Hartford Tech counts as one of the applications. You cannot select multiple programs at Hartford Tech nor can you select multiple programs at the Natural Resources Agricultural Science Program. You must specifically select a program at each of those sites. Our timeline, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we will be opening the application on October 20th. It'll be opening at 6 a.m. on October 20th and closing at midnight on December 1st. It is a full six week period that students will have the opportunity to start their application, work on it sporadically, and submit it on December 1st. Again, it is a full six week window. Students do not need to start the application and complete it in one evening or one seating. You do have the opportunity to go back into the application multiple times, save your work throughout, work on pieces of it. It is critical though when this, the application is complete to hit the submit button. There are multiple options for our students. There is a save option for them to save their work as they're working and a submit button when they have completed the application are ready to turn that in. In January and February, students who are, who've applied to the Natural Resources Agricultural Science Program, the International Baccalaureate Program and the Science and Math Academy and have been selected for the second round of assessments will be notified. Those students will receive that notification from the program coordinators with specificity of where and when that testing will take place. Usually the end of February, uh, students will be notified from our program coordinators. Usually within a 24 hour window, all seven of our programs will be sending out acceptance letters for students who have been offered up seats within the programs. We do ask that the students within about approximately a month into March notify us if they are planning on attending the programs they've been accepted. Frequently when students apply to multiple programs, they are offered seats in multiple programs. Your son or daughter will be able to accept one of those seats only. 
so they do not have the opportunity to play the game of jumping between programs. Please understand that when they decline a seat at one program, that opens up an opportunity for a student who may have not made the initial round, who is on our wait list, that then would be given that seat. So again, we open up on October 20th, close on December 1st. Students who are a part of the assessment window for SMA, IB, and NRAS are notified in January. Students across the board will be notified if they've been offered a seat, are on a wait list, or have been declined in February, and the return notification to the coordinators is in March. Next steps. So again, talked about the assessment piece for IB, SMA, and NRAS. That was in January. Again, details will be sent out about specifics. Um, last year, obviously due to COVID and restrictions, we did it in a virtual format. At this point, it is yet to be determined what that format will be. Hartford Tech, ITOA, and the TAM program, the Teacher Academy of Maryland, they look and review second quarter grades. In our P-TECH program, once students have been selected for an option to accept a seat, we have intent meetings. The intent meetings do involve the entire family. And it is critical to note that all these decisions, regardless of which program your son or daughter choose to attend, it is a family decision because in many cases, the student is leaving their home school to go to another school. And it is different requirements to be a part of these magnet programs. So when we say this is a family decision, it truly is because the additional requirements on the family, time, et cetera, is something that does have to be weighed in when decisions of accepting a program is made. Program specific requirements. Our International Baccalaureate Program at Edgewood High School requires students to have completed Algebra 1 by the end of 8th grade. The Natural Resources Agricultural Science Program in ITOA or our Oracle Academy also requires, or excuse me, recommends students to have completed Algebra 1. The Science Math Academy requires our students to have completed Algebra 1 and Geometry before entering ninth grade, and I'll come back to that shortly. And Hartford Tech looks at attendance and each of the programs have specific requirements per program. About the SMA and the math requirement, frequently we get questions from students and parents who their son or daughter may not be on the, the track correctly right now for math in grade eight. They may only be finishing up algebra. HCPS will be offering summer school opportunities for students who are, in, who are currently in algebra one to complete geometry to make them eligible for the Science and Math Academy. The CTE office is also working very closely with the Distance Learning Office to offer up Algebra 1 as well for students this coming summer. So again, these math requirements are in place, but HCPS will provide opportunities for your son or daughter if they are not at the correct placement at the time of application to be in place as they enter grade nine. Teacher endorsements I had mentioned earlier, we do require three of those. For students who are HCPS students, you will have the opportunity of a drag down menu. We do pull all of your demographics and information out of our school systems database. So you'll be able to select your English, your math, and your science teacher for those applications for, the, for your endorsements. Um, Non-HCPS students, there are specific directions as part of your application to enter in teacher contact information. This is a change from last year. We are now returning back to eighth grade student endorsements opposed to seventh grade teacher endorsements. Communication, all of our communications are done electronically through the HCPS portal. You would be receiving information from the coordinators or through the automated system, which does have the HCPS.org designation at the end. Please make sure that the information that is entered into the application, both for the student and the parent, is 100% accurate. The students are making sure that the information is valid and is checked frequently. Again, please note if you have filters on your email at home to make sure that the email address webmaster hcps.org is active and allows emails to be accepted. And please make sure you check your spam folder. Every year we get families who will reach out to us multiple times after applications have been started. 
And the unfortunate thing is, is the replies are going into spam or junk folders. So please make sure you check those. If you still continue to have issues, uh, the email contacts for the coordinators will be provided later this after this evening. You can reach out to them or again, you could go to the HCPS dot org slash schools slash magna programs. There's the accompanying information on that site. Transportation is another thing we get a tremendous amount of questions about. Um, the IB program, the ITOA program, NRAS, PTAC, SMA, and the Teacher Academy of Maryland will be utilizing depot stop transportation to and from the schools. Uh, Harper Tech, again, being a separate school upon its own, our technical program will provide neighborhood stops. There is no charge or no cost to anyone to utilize the transportation that HCPS provides. And normally what will happen is in mid-August, late August, our Harford County Transportation Office will be notifying the parents and the students of their transportation pickup time and location. That communication is usually done through the coordinators or through the supervisor of transportation. This year we've been resulted as COVID has resulted in us having to do our virtual open house events. Um, the schedule for the open house events will be starting on October 21st. We have the Science and Math Academy. Uh, the URL link is also on the HCPS slash school slash magnet program website. So October 21st is the Science Math Academy. October 25th is the IB program. October 26th is the Natural Resources and Agricultural Science program. The 27th of October is the ITOA Information Technology Oracle Academy program. October 28th is Hartford Technical High School. November 2nd is our PTEC Pathways in Technology Early College High School program. And on November 4th is the TAM Academy at both Edgewood and Hartford Tech. Again, these will be virtual events. They will also be recorded and will be accessible usually two to three days after the event has been uh, presented. Changes for the 22-23 school year. Harford Tech's admission procedures have changed. Um, normally, we have done it straight merit. Moving for the 22-23 school year, students will have the opportunity, 50% of the students admitted per program will be per merit, and 50% will be per open lottery. Students who would qualify for the open lottery must, must meet the minimum program requirements and must have expressed interest in the program in their essay. These students will be randomly drawn to meet half the program's requirement. For example, if our welding program at Hartford Tech is able to take 20 students and we have 30 students who apply, all 30 students are ranked by their academic merits. Students one through 10 are provided the first half of the cohort seats. The students who are ranked 11 through 30 at that point are placed into a random number generator and re-ranked. At that point, students 11 through 20 then are offered seats 11 through 20, and the remaining students 21 through 30 create and have, will then be the wait list. So if there is a seat that does open up, we go to the next individual on the wait list, individual number 12, and so on and so forth till our programs are filled. Again, teacher endorsements for this year have returned back to grade eight. So it will be eighth grade teachers will be providing the endorsements for all students. Our teacher academy has expanded and is now up and running in two locations, both at Edgewood High School and Harper Technical High School. The TAM is also a new separate part of the magnet application itself. So if you're an individual interested in the teaching profession, you will not find that as an option for Harper Technical High School. You are applying to the program itself. And we're really excited to share this new piece, which is known as our TAM Plus program. Our TAM Plus program is an accelerated college program that works in conjunction with our Teacher Academy of Maryland. It will be providing students the opportunity to complete an AAT, an associate's degree in teaching from Hartford Community College, simultaneously with the requirements of HCPS and the TAM program to get their high school diploma in as little as four years. We are also working with Towson University to create a partnership for students to transition from our TAM Plus program directly to Towson 
and be able to secure their bachelor's degree in teaching in as little as two years after completing high school. Uh, we're also very excited to hopefully encourage these students to come back to Harford County Public Schools with minimal or no cost to come back and teach with us. Students as part of that TAM Plus program will have that opportunity to declare that intent at the end of their ninth grade year entering into grade 10. So all students interested in teaching, regardless if it's our traditional TAM program, the Teacher Academy of Maryland, or the TAM Plus program would apply to TAM and then declare their intent at the end of grade nine. All right, at this point, I would like to, or I'm sorry, uh, and our program coordinators, I jumped ahead of myself. This is Ms. Child, she's the program coordinator for the IB program. Mr. Robert Scott, the program coordinator for ITOA or the Information Technology Oracle Academy. Mr. Greg Merle, who's the coordinator of the Natural Resources Agricultural Science Program up at North Hartford High School. Mr. Shamari Zachary, who is the coordinator of the PTEC program, Pathways in Technology Early College High School, which was our first early college program for Harford County. Ms. Sarah Ashley, the coordinator for the Science and Mathematics Academy at Aberdeen High School. And Ms. Elisa Thomas is the coordinator of both our TAM and TAM Plus program at Harford Technical High School and at Edgewood High School. And Ms. Jeannie Donalick, who is the program coordinator for Harford Technical High School, which has 17 different CTE programs. Again, all of this information is available at hcps.org slash schools slash magnet programs. And again, you'll note the highlighted section in the background. That is the program booklet, which does provide all the information that was shared this evening, in addition to additional information such as contacts for all the program coordinators. And at this point, we are going to transition to hear from each of our program coordinators who will share a little bit about the program, a little about the students, and a little bit about the expectations. So at this point, I'd like to introduce Ms. Laura Childs. Hi, my name is Laura Childs and I am the Global Studies International Baccalaureate Coordinator at Edgewood High School. I wanted to tell you a little bit about what makes our program unique. The IP program is geared towards students who want to experience collegiate courses in high school. It's designed to approach all learning with global perspectives and international mindedness. The, it is an internationally recognized program in which students focus on all areas of study, STEAM or science, technology and mathematics, but we equally focus on humanities, arts and philosophy, all in a collaborative way. It is developed to inspire students to be active participants in their local and global communities, and you will get opportunities to work with people from all around the world. The IB mission statement is that the International Baccalaureate aims to develop inquiring, knowledgeable, and caring young people who help to create a better and more peaceful world through intercultural understanding and respect. So to this end, the organization works with schools and governments and international organizations to developing challenging programs of international education and rigorous assessment. Our program encourages students across the world to become active, compassionate, and lifelong learners who understand that other people with their differences can also be right. As IB learners, we will strive to be inquirers, principled, knowledgeable, caring, thinkers, open-minded, communicators, balanced, risk-takers, and reflective. So who should enroll in the GSIB program? We are looking for students who are in intentional with their work, who are organized with their studied habits, who are self-aware and self-sufficient, reflective in their learning, and willing to negotiate with more challenging and sophisticated coursework, and who bring reading and writing skills to all of their courses. One thing you should know about this program is that it is split into two parts. So the first part takes place in the students' ninth and 10th grade years, which is the global studies part of our program, in which students learn how to critically think, how to study, how to research, write, and communicate all with global perspectives in mind. 
all while preparing them for the international baccalaureate part of the program, which is the diploma program, which takes place during the student's 11th and 12th grade years. We offer 55 seats to our program and we get anywhere from 125 to 200 applicants a year. The advantages of enrolling in IB courses are that it's one of the most richest and challenging programs of study available to high school students. It provides a curriculum that connects all of our disciplines together, learning is integrated, and critical thinking skills are developed. Students frequently earn college credit and advanced placement status, sometimes up to 30 college credits by the time they complete the program and starting colleges with sophomore standing. Students are extremely well prepared for their college work, both the rigorous demands of the subjects and time, man time management required. Students will leave high school with a high school diploma, but also an internationally recognized diploma. Students will get the opportunity to participate in creative and service oriented activities. They get to reflect on growth academically and personally. They become more globally minded and we offer unique courses of study that are only available in this program, such as sports, exercise, health science, world religions, film and theory of knowledge. We're going to send it off now to Ms. our next coordinator, Mr. Robert Scott. Thank you, Mrs. Childs, I appreciate it. So my name is Rob Scott. I'm the Information Technology Oracle Academy Coordinator at Heavy Grace High School, and I'm super excited to talk to everyone about the opportunity that the I2A program has to offer. As you may know, computer science is a very important skill in today's age. We are constantly using computers. We are constantly analyzing data. We are constantly doing them for really everything that we do. What our program focuses in is two different disciplines. The two different disciplines are Java and database management. In our Java course, we have students explore, uh, explore different applications such as Alice, Greenfoot, um, and then eventually they just start programming in Java completing tasks. Um, these assignments that you would be working on, you would be creating games, you'd be creating stories, you would be creative throughout this entire process. The second part of this program is database management. Database management uses SQL or structured query language to manage data. If you think any business that's out there, there is a database somewhere that has to control all of this data. So what we take a look at is how do we organize this data and how do we extract this data? As you can see, both of these concepts are really, really important skills that you can use in the future. We also have two AP courses that you will take throughout your journey with us, AP Computer Science Principles and AP Computer Science A. Your freshman and your sophomore year mainly focuses in those classes, but your junior and senior year is where you get a really unique opportunity. You could choose to participate in internships where there are uh, people in the computer science field that are coming alongside you, teaching you what they know, showing you what they're doing on an everyday basis, and also allowing you to work on projects. We have partnerships uh, at APG uh, the supercomputing center there is there. We have businesses in Havity Grace that are willing to allow students to come in to see exactly what computer science are doing on an everyday basis. Or you could choose to explore many classes at HCC. Those courses you could take in order to earn college credits that could possibly transfer if you are interested in continuing, uh, continuing in the information technology field. Our students are a diverse group. We've accepted students from pretty, pretty much every middle school in the county, along with homeschooled students, private school students. Really, it's a melting pot at our school. Um, and the purpose of this program is to prepare you for a field in technology. If you are interested in computers, you're interested in creating things. If you are interested in learning this this relatively new field, come explore it at the ITOA program. 
What's really awesome about this program is the opportunities that you have. You get to step in, see real people do real work, and you get to experience that every day in class. I would like to remind you that on October 27th, we will have our open house. Uh, so I encourage anyone that is interested in the I2A program, come check us out at that virtual open house. We'd love to see you there, and I hope to see you guys in the future. At this time, I'm now gonna send it over to our Natural Resources and Agricultural Sciences Program Coordinator, Mr. Greg Merle. Thanks, Rob. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight and welcome. My name is Greg Merle. I am the program specialist for the Natural Resources and Agricultural Science Magnet Program. And as you can see, a lot of our story is told through pictures. And um, so let's talk a little bit about how we got started. Our program began about 10 years ago with the idea of to give students a unique and strong academic experience uh, with additional field work and things that related to industry. So they developed the skills and the knowledge that they could go right out into the world of work or go to some of our regional two-year um, colleges or to four-year universities. And we've done that. We have plenty of students that have taken the knowledge they have with us, gone to two-year programs in the region that support um, all the different types of learning that we offer. We have four-year students all over the country from Oregon to Texas and throughout the Midwest and some of those larger uh, types of farming communities from Michigan to Florida and all up and down the East Coast taking advantage of many natural resource and agricultural opportunities with college, including Ivy League schools. Uh, one of the unique things that we did is we went to these universities and said, what do your, our students need to know to be able to get into your programs? And so um, if we're able to go back one slide, that would be great because um, we want to take a look at the four, the four areas. So these areas are typical within college uh, courses of, natural, res of um, natural resource agricultural science in those schools. So we offer uh, students enrollment in the area of large animal science, small animal science and vet tech assistance, plant sciences or natural resource sciences. And these four unique strands begin as freshmen in a course we call Foundations, where students get an overview of what it means to be stewards of the environment and stewards of agriculture. We all know that Harford County is well rooted in agriculture, and there's lots of wonderful examples of this as you drive throughout the county. And so we, we ask you to take advantage of some of those things, whether it's buying local products, going to a, a local farmer's market, or visiting a farm or an orchard. Uh, in addition to that, we go then into uh, the core courses that you see listed below each strand name. And those core courses, one is taken in the sophomore year, one is taken in the junior year, and it culminates in a capstone a course at a technical writing course as seniors, where students do independent research. And then we bring this together for a wonderful gallery walk where they get to showcase the things they've learned over the past four years. Uh, we take, uh, we receive about 150 to 170 applicants every year. Uh, we take 25 students per strand, so approximately 100 students. Sometimes we take a little bit more, sometimes a little less, depending on the total number of applicants. One of the unique things about our program is once you meet those minimum requirements, um, every student over the last four years that has met those minimum requirements at some point in the admission process has been offered admission. So we haven't had to turn anyone away. Certainly some students, as Mr. Limpert mentioned, are going to choose some of the other fantastic programs that you're learning about tonight. And that's OK with us. We want the students to find the best fit for them. And if it's the Natural Resource and Agricultural Science program, then we're glad to have you be a part of that. But obviously, as you've learned, we have some fantastic other programs throughout Hartford County. Here's our campus, and this campus really tells the story. We have 35 uh, wonderful acres to utilize. We have wooded areas for forestry and exploration through natural resources. We have a pond, a stream, two wetlands. You can see our barns in these pictures and our pastures. Uh, this, the in this upper left, uh, right, right hand corner, sorry, picture is our combination Ag Heritage and Earth Day activity. And um, it's a wonderful event where uh, the local schools can visit and our students uh, that are not part of the program get to come out and see what it is our students do. And so on campus, we have all kinds of different wildlife uh, to explore. 
We have our barns with cows, sheep, horses, alpaca, and, and pigs. We have a wonderful aquaculture lab that's brand new where we students do research, a beautiful fish wall like you might see uh, at PetSmart. And we have, of course, our greenhouse, which is always uh, full of activity. We, we do farm to school activities in there, uh, raising different vegetables that our cafeteria can use. So you can see there's a lot of unique opportunities uh, and we're outside uh, quite a bit. So we would remind students um, to please join us on October the 26th for our virtual event. And we look forward to uh, seeing you and talking to you uh, through the chat and through the emails. And we thank you again for joining us tonight. And I'd like to send this over to Shamari Zachary at the P-TECH program at Joppa Town. Shamari, it's all yours. Thank you so much and good evening, everyone. Um, so glad that you have joined us on tonight. So I am Shamari Zachary and I am the P-TECH coordinator. Um, and so uh, um, if you are interested in computers and coding and software and um, those different things, um, welcome to our program. So just to kind of give you an idea of the program, um, we certainly um, have one goal and that is basically to prepare young scholars um, with the academic, technical and professional skills um, required for 21st century jobs and ongoing education. We offer two pathways. Um, the first pathway is cybersecurity. Uh, we know that uh, we've had cyber attacks. T-Mobile has had um, a cyber, cyber attack recently. And so our students will uh, be responsible for keeping us safe and keeping our um, information safe. And so we have the cybersecurity um, pathway and then we have the computer information system pathway. So there are three options basically um, that uh, are, are chosen. You have a four year pathway, five year and a six year pathway, which is all determined based on um, when they come to us in the eighth grade, what math they are currently on. As Rob shared earlier, there are opportunities to advance um, through the pathway during the summer. Um, I know for certain the geometry and hopefully this year we offer the algebra one. Um, so students do have the opportunity this summer to advance. But again, um, we offer the two pathways, uh, computer information systems and cyber security. And again, this program can be completed in four, five or six years. So just to kind of give an overview of the program, um, basically this program allows students to earn a high school diploma as well as a industry recognized associate's degree um, from HCC. And so they will gain relevant work um, experience in a growing field and become certified with pass and test scores. They are actually leave the program with um, at least three certifications such as like C++ um, and learning JavaScript as well. Um, but again, the main focus is that they have the opportunity to earn 60 credits um, at HCC and graduate with an associate's degree in four years. Um, and so they can go on after that and they can um, pursue education at a college um, or they can go right into the field of cybersecurity or computer information systems making 60,000 plus at 18. Wow, what an amazing program. So um, I've shared with you the two pathways there. Um, and basically they take the classes at Joppa Town. P-TECH is offered at Joppa Town High School and they certainly take those classes there on campus. And so our current students, um, we currently have 60 students um, in the P-TECH program and we are looking for our next 30 students. We take 30 students every year. It is an open lottery. Um, there are no uh, requirements. So as specified in some of the other programs where you may have um, tests or essays that you have to write, this is open access and an open lottery um, process as well. And so we are looking for the next 30 um, students that want to be a part of our program. We have 14 students currently taking college classes. So um, college classes start 
as early as ninth grade, every ninth grade student, a part of the P-TECH program will actually take one college course. Um, there are some that take two college courses. So uh, it is amazing program that allows you to get uh, experience your first year into the program. And so we currently have 14 students right now that are taking college courses that are into um, those two industry fields that I talked about. And then we have 45 students that are currently taking AP because we want them to be prepared for college. They, we know that they start their ninth grade year, so we want them to be prepared. So we provide and support AP programs starting also in the ninth grade so that they are prepared. And then our P-TECH partners, we have two partners. Um, that are a part of the program. Of course, we talked about HCC, which is Hartford Community College, um, is one of our partners. And then we have the um, U.S. Army through SECOM um, at APG. So right in our backyard um, is one of our um, partners. And basically, they provide the mentorship and the internship um, for them. Each student will have a mentor each year of the program um, starting in ninth grade, and they will get insight into the career field. They will um, get insight on how to be successful in college, how to be successful in high school. And as they transition to the middle school, we have wonderful, excellent uh, mentors. We currently have 30 mentors that are currently working with both cohorts that have been accepted into the program. And then the P-TECH journey, we call it a journey. Um, of course, we've talked about the acceptance, so please make sure you start that application process October 20th and don't miss the deadline December 1st. Then you have your high school coursework that you will be involved in, your college coursework, which again starts your ninth grade year. Then your mentorship, which also starts your ninth grade year and continues throughout the program. And then your senior year, you have the opportunity for a paid internship to prepare you again to go into one of those career fields and either go or continue your education at a college after you have earned those 60 college credits and your associate's degree, or you may then go into the career field. So the benefits are, are, are the outcomes. Again, simply the high school coursework is going to prepare you um, for the college coursework. And then your college coursework is going to prepare you for your internship and give you that associate's degree from Hartford Community College. So again, we certainly look forward um, to you joining this program. It is an exciting program. There are some exciting things that are going on. Um, it's a hands-on experience. And so we welcome you to join us November 2nd. Um, November 2nd, we um, encourage you to join us for our live event, and we will dive deeper into the P-TECH program. At this point, I am going to turn it over to Sarah Ashley for our SMA Academy. Hi, good evening. I'm Sarah Ashley, Program Specialist for the Science and Mathematics Academy at Aberdeen High School. This SMA is a STEM-focused school. Our goal is to prepare students for any college major related to science, technology, engineering, computer science, or mathematics. We do this through a curriculum that is focused on problem solving and hands-on real world research and labs. At the SMA, students are members of a smaller learning community of 200 students and eight dedicated SMA teachers. These teachers are responsible for instructing all of the SMA specific courses. Students also have the opportunity to take semester electives only available to students at the SMA. We offer 14 electives to choose from, such as microcontrollers, biotechnology, linear algebra, and organic chemistry. Our four-year sequence of courses called Science, Research, and Technology, SRT, exposes students to projects across STEM fields and culminates in a unique senior year capstone where students work with mentors in labs conducting authentic real-world research projects off campus. It's common for these projects to lead to paid summer internships after high school, or being listed as a co-author in mentor published research. Lastly, we enhance all of our AP and honors curriculum 
in the areas of science and mathematics by including additional topics and tying those classes in with SRT. Each year, 9th through 12th grade students take a minimum of four SMA specific classes. Students will take mathematics through AP calculus and courses in environmental science, biology, chemistry, and physics, among others. Notice that students still have plenty of room to participate in band, chorus, orchestra, fine art, and sports throughout high school. In fact, 62% of our current students play one or more sport, 55% are in band, chorus, or orchestra, and 92% are a member of at least one club. Overall, the SMA is the place for students with a passion and love of science, engineering, mathematics, technology, and computer science. I hope that you're able to join us for our virtual open house on Thursday, October 21st. Now I'll turn it over to hear from Alyssa Thomas about our TAM and TAM Plus programs. Good evening. My name is Alisa Thomas and I'm in charge of the Teacher Academy of Maryland for Harvard County Public Schools. The Teacher Academy of Maryland is a career and technology program um, that is sponsored by MSDE. It is really for students who are interested in a career in education. That doesn't always mean they want to be a teacher. Um, students may want to be a school psychologist, a school counselor, an administrator, um, an athletic coach, a high school, middle school, elementary teacher, special educator, um, may also want to be a professor in college. Um, there are a variety of skills the students learn that would allow them to do those things. Some of the things that we offer students in the TAM program, um, there are four courses that students take while they are in TAM. The first one is human growth and development. The second one is teaching as a profession. Then they focus on foundations of curriculum and instruction. And then all students in the TAM and the TAM Plus programs are put into an internship uh, with a teacher in Harford County Public Schools where they get hands on experience learning how to lesson plan, work with teachers, work with students, um, go to faculty meetings, learn what it's like to be a real teacher. Um, and I supervise that program very closely for those students. Uh, that's to me one of the exciting things about TAM that sets it apart. Um, I think it's a unique experience for students to have that opportunity before they even start college. Uh, in TAM this year, um, we currently have 120 students um, that are studying TAM across Edgewood High School and Harford Technical High School. Um, the new program that we are offering is called TAM Plus. TAM Plus is an early college program, very similar to P-TECH, except for we're focusing on education. We're focusing on teachers and we're focusing on education. Students have the opportunity in TAM Plus to earn an Associates of Arts in teaching while simultaneously getting their um, degree in high school. They also will be given an opportunity to do an internship um, and they will be given a teacher mentor that will liaison with the college um, with HCC while they're working on their coursework um, through that. The, as Mr. Limpert stated, the um, ability to apply to TAM Plus happens at the end of the ninth grade year. So your student would apply to TAM, go through their ninth grade year in TAM, and then declare their intent to continue on either in regular TAM or to move into TAM Plus, which is the early college program. Um, we have a great variety of students in the TAM program in both of our schools. Um, I hope that you'll enjoy, um, not enjoy, but I hope that you'll join me on November 4th for our open house so I can answer more questions for you. Um, and just to tell you what a great program this is for Harford County Public Schools so that we can grow our own teachers um, and have teachers for years to come coming right out of our schools. And now I'm going to hand it over to my good friend, Ms. Jeannie Donlick, who's going to talk to us about trades and industry. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeannie Donlick, and I am the program specialist at Harper Technical High School. It is a pleasure to be here with you this evening to speak on behalf of our industry teachers. We are excited to be part of this ever growing field of career and technical industries. Our respectful school community, as you see there, 
has a true passion for authentic learning. So we make it our mission to build positive relationships with our students in a very supportive environment. So what makes us unique? Well, Harford Tech is able to offer students a balance of both academic and skill training on a daily basis. This platform ensures that our students can readily transition for employment, apprenticeships, career schools, two-year schools, four-year universities, and even the military. Each of our programs of study contains specific curriculum focused not only on college and industry knowledge, but also on essential employability skills and habits of success. In addition, our technical fields, we also offer and provide numerous opportunities for academically motivated students to challenge themselves and participate in more advanced coursework that our school has and through HCC. Harford Tech offers 17 unique Maryland State Department of Education programs that all correspond to one of the 10 career clusters. Each of our pathways lead to industry certification and or post-secondary credentials that allow students to advance in their cluster. I would implore you to look into each one and review the guides for that specific program. We believe in a very strong school community that is built by being involved. Therefore, we encourage our students to participate in any of our 16 sports teams or in one of our 28 clubs and organizations. If these technical areas appeal to you, we would love to have you join us at our open house on October 28th at 6.30, where we can gather more information and you can explore some specific options and find the best fit for you. Thank you for your time. Back to Mr. Lippert. Thank you, Ms. Donnelly and all the other coordinators. <clears throat> so at this time, we have an opportunity for some of our questions that have been posted throughout the chat. We have about 30 of them in there. So I'm going to ask Mr. Scott if you'd like to queue up some of those questions and we'll provide some of the answers. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first one. Um, many activities have been limited due to COVID protocols. Will this be taken into consideration? Yes, we're well aware of the uh, limitations that have been imposed on our students, both within the school system and outside with limited rec activities and uh, folks being forced to quarantine. So as a part of the application process this year, that will be looked at and it will be a factor for all of our applicants. If a student really struggled during virtual learning, but their grades improved when they were back in person, will that be taken into account? It will, as I mentioned in the previous question, again, COVID, quarantine, digital learning for all of our students has been a struggle. So many of them are, have experienced that same difficulty and that will be factored in as we look at and examine each of the students' individual applications. Will students have to pay HCC tuition or all classes for PTech free? The PTEC program is really an exciting opportunity for our students. Um, Mr. Zachary touched upon it. Again, this is a completely cost free opportunity for students who participate in the PTEC program. So there is no out of pocket costs at all for anything involved in the students achieving their associate's degree. That goes for the books, it goes for tuition fees, it goes for lab fees. Um, as a part of the PTEC program and our partnership with CECOM on Aberdeen Proving Ground, they're actually covering the cost for students to receive their federal clearances to get on and off of APG for their internship. internship. So this is a very, very unique opportunity for individuals to get their associate's degree, get military clearance, all for free. We have a few questions asking about why Biomed is not currently listed? Yeah, that's a question we get almost uh, every year. Um, 
There are really two sections of career and technical education programs Harper County Public Schools offers. The ones that you're hearing about tonight are our magnet opportunities and they are open to students countywide to apply and participate in. And then we also have specialized programs at some of our neighborhood or comprehensive high schools. Biomed is one of our more popular ones, especially around the area of Bel Air High School, since Bel Air does offer the biomedical program. Habit of Grace also offers those. Those are notif those are actually noted as specialty programs and are available uh, as open enrollment programs for students who reside in those communities. For example, Bel Air, Bel Air and Habit of Grace both have the biomedical program. Aberdeen High School, Falston High School and Simone Wright have the Project Lead the Way pre-engineering program. Edgewood High School has the Academy of Finance. Joppa Town High School has Homeland Security. So these are all what are known as specialized programs. Every one of our comprehensive high schools has at least one specialized program. And as you've heard tonight, we also have the seven magnets. Patterson Mill, uh, Bel Air High School and North Hartford also have the Interactive Media Productions Program, which special specializes in video and um, television production. Very good. So we had a question. Why can't my child's seventh grade teacher be accessed? They know they're them better than the eighth grade teachers of this year. That question did come up. Uh, the leadership here in Harper County Public Schools determined that looking at individuals in an in-person instruction model is much more of a true reflection of their ability academics opposed to the variation that we had last year with the modification due to COVID of being in person, not being in person, and then not being back in person. So to get a true representation of our students in a truly academic setting, it was determined to utilize the grade eight students that the students are in person with for this year. How are students with IEPs considered? Are IEP accommodations still available if they get accepted into a program? Yes, yeah, students receiving any sort of accommodations through an IEP or 504, those accommodations are federally, we are required to implement those for students as a part of any of these programs. Um, our application process is a blind process. So we do not know throughout the application up to the student's selection for admission into a program if they are receiving any sort of accommodations through an IEP or uh, 504. However, it is at the discretion of the student and the family for individuals who are selected for the additional assessments through IB, SMA, and NRAS, if they would like to utilize those accommodations for that assessment, they are able to do that, but they would have to notify our coordinator at least one week prior to the assessment window. We're getting several questions asking, what school would be best for this job? What would you recommend that those individuals do to find out what program best fits their needs? My recommendation for specific jobs would be to reach out or attend the open house because tonight is just a general overview of all the opportunities that are out there. We do frequently get questions about uh, performing arts, about law, things such as that, that we do not have specific programs, but many of our programs providing the, the foundation of college level work in the broad range of multiple educational opportunities more than adequately prepare students for that next step in post-secondary education in a specific field such as law, performing arts, etc. So my recommendation would be to go to the open house, have conversations with the coordinators and see what's the best fit for your son or daughter. Do all of the programs give students the opportunity to earn an associate's degree? At this point, we do not offer that beyond the PTEC program and the TAM Plus program. Um, as a part of our superintendent's vision for North Star and our students to achieve North Star graduate status, uh, additional college credit opportunities for dual enrollment will continue to grow. Um, however, our magnet programs are specified programs of study. So some of them do have opportunities for dual enrollment and college credits. Others are very specified programs that do not offer those. However, all of our schools do offer dual enrollment exploratory courses through the North Star Coordinator. In addition to our AP Advanced Placement credits, 
which in many cases can be transferred to a post-secondary institution for credits in general studies. What is the difference between TAM and Edgewood or Harford Tech? Besides location, there's in instructor, nothing. Our, our TAM program is the, as Ms. Thomas shared, it is the TAM program that the Maryland State Department of Education um, has in place under the CTE umbrella. It is the same program that you would have at Harford Tech, that you would have at Edgewood High School, or any of the other surrounding counties if your son or daughter was to study TAM in the state of Maryland. And continuing with TAM Plus, we have the question, is TAM Plus free for students as well? Can you request a certain location as well? Location is going to be determined uh, by lottery. It is going to be randomly selected for those students uh, between, again, the Edgewood site and the Hartford Tech site. And cost, as of right now, there is no cost associated with the courses for, as part of the TAM Plus piece with Hartford Community College. Beyond that, at this point, we have not made a determination if Towson will be willing to partner with us. So at this point, many of the courses in the plus piece or the associate's degree in teaching will be cost free. What is the main difference between information technology and P-TECH programs? That might be a better question for you there, Mr. Scott, than for me. If you would like me to, I can jump on. And if you want to address the uh, P the uh, ITOA piece, uh, either myself or Mr. Zachary can address the PTEC piece. Yeah, so I'll address the ITOA piece. Uh, so we focus in two pathways, Java and database management. Um, within those two pathways, you focus in your freshman and your sophomore year, and then your junior and senior, you have opportunities for internships and classes at HCC. And so I'm going to send it over to Mr. Shamari to talk more about the um, more about the P-TECH program. Sure. So as, as far as the P-TECH program is concerned, um, you do get at least three certifications um, that you would have um, with that, the C++. You also would earn your associate's degree. Um, you would have 60 credits that go towards an associate's degree. Um, and so, and then we have the pathways of computer information systems and cybersecurity. Um, so the main difference being one, of course, the associate's degree that you would earn and also the certifications um, that you would earn as well. Great, thank you. Mr. Scott? What is the difference? We're still getting a few of these. What is the difference between a magnet program and a specialized program? Yeah, a magnet program is again open to any students from any middle school in Hartford County, public or private, <clears throat> to apply and be a part of. The specialized program is limited to only students who would be applying or not, excuse me, not applying, would be attending off of their feeder system. So for example, Bel Air Middle, a student at Bel Air Middle would have the opportunity to apply to any of our magnet programs across the county. It doesn't matter where it is, they can apply and attend. However, only students from Bel Air Middle would have the opportunity to attend the biomedical program at Bel Air High School. So if your son or daughter attended Southampton, they could not attend the biomedical program at Bel Air High School. Southampton has the opportunity for their students to attend the pre-engineering program at C. Milton Wright which would not be an opportunity to students at Bel Air High School. So it really depends on the feeder from middle to high that is opened up for the specialized programs and Magnet is open up to any student anywhere to attend, apply and attend anywhere across the county. A lot of questions are getting asked, what grades are required for this program? What grades are required for that program? What would you say to those students? As a part of the application process, we take a look at all your grades, not just even the grades from the three teachers who provide the endorsements. It is a big full picture of all of your grades. So your middle school health, your middle school PE, your middle school band, everything that you've taken in grades six, seven and eight is looked at and is factored in. So if you were an individual who didn't do great in math, but are really strong in ILA, that'll be seen. So it's really a, a full picture of all your academic 
grades. What year of standardized testing will be will the high schools be looking at? Again, it's going to be any of the standardized testing that's accessible to students, to the coordinators through our systems. It will be anything from grades six through eight. There was a big void, obviously, that was there um, due to COVID with a many tests being missed. And as you're probably hearing from your sons and daughters at this point, many of them are taking them right now in middle school. So if those tests do come back, which they are supposed to be coming back in approximately four weeks after admission, that will be part of the picture that will be looked at for your students standardized test for a part of their evaluation. If you don't get into a magnet program in eighth grade, could you apply again after completing ninth grade in a different high school? We do have the opportunity for ninth graders to look to attend some of our magnet programs. Um, that does happen at the back end of the school year. The individuals who are interested in that would need to reach out to the specific program coordinators. It is a separate application process from this process. So if you are a ninth grader or your son or daughter is a ninth grader that either missed out or determined not to apply last year, you need to reach out to the individual program that you're interested in and see if there are seats available. Every year, fortunately or unfortunately, however you look view that, we do lose students due to families moving, uh, students making a determination that that isn't the right program for them, and we do have seats that are vacated at pretty much most of our magnet programs, which then do provide opportunities for students who are in ninth grade currently and are going to be entering into grade 10. In some cases, it does put a little more of a stress around students because they are coming in immediately into the program that they are now a year behind on some of the academics. So their schedule may be a bit more difficult for grades 10 and 11, but usually by their senior year, they are caught up with all of their peers. We've heard that there are some programs that have internships. Are they paid internships? In some cases, the internships are paid or there is compensa compensation provided to the students. Um, the PTAC program, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Zachary, I believe there is a paid internship piece to that. Yes, that is correct. It is a paid internship um, through CECOM or um, at Aberdeen Proving Ground. Um, so yes, it is a paid internship their senior year. Thank you. Other programs, the internship is a part of the educational experience and compensation would not be provided to them. It really depends on, on the partner that the internship works with. The majority of them, with the exception of PTEC, um, are not compensated internships at this point. Some people are asking, what is the ratios of students accepted into the IB program or the SMA program? What would you recommend to those people to find out that information? Yeah, that's actually one of the pieces. Thank you, Rob. That was one of the pieces that's actually in our magnet brochure. Um, some of the information, typically we get about 115 applications to the ITO, ITOA program. And again, we accept 50 students to that. Uh, the Natural Resources Agricultural Science Program, approximately 150 applications in, in a really good year. We usually take 125 per strand. Again, there's four strands, large animal, small animal, plants and land. Uh, PTEC, we have approximately 120 applicants, accepting 30 via the lottery system. SMA usually receives around 250 applications and about 55 students are accepted there. Very similar numbers for the IB program with about 200 applications and about 55 students accepted. Hartford Tech, we see approximately 750 applications for those programs and approximately 270 students are accepted to that. And for our PTEC, or excuse me, our TAM program, we're hoping to see 120 applications and we're very hopeful to get 90 students involved into our TAM program for this coming fall. We also have a question about students that are in private school or being homeschooled. If they haven't taken standardized tests, can they still apply? Yes, we will want a full academic package um, from the institution that they are coming to us from. 
Um, that is in part of the application process. It talks about sending that information to our coordinators and having it uploaded into the application portal so that our, our coordinators have access to all of that information. Um, same thing goes for homeschool individuals uh, as far as if the same teacher is used for multiple contact contents, that teacher does need to be listed multiple times. Let's take two more questions there, Mr. Scott. Very good, very good. What are the requirements for the essay needed for the application? As far as the essay goes, typically the essay question is asking the student why he or she wants to be a part of the, that specific program. Um, we do ask that the students write the essay themselves. Um, this is usually something that I make sure and touch upon when we're in person. Frequently, we will get essays that will rival doctoral work. Uh, and it's, it's sometimes very amazing to, to Get the idea that an eighth grader may have produced that level of, of writing. So please, mom and dad, keep in mind that we understand that you want your son or daughter to be a part of these programs and it, we encourage you to be supportive and help them and proof and do all those different things as you would do with any other assignment that they may be working on. However, keep in mind for the next four years, they are going to be the ones that are going to be producing the work that is going to be evaluated day on and day in and day out at school. So let them write the essay, definitely be there to support, definitely be there to help them, but let them submit that themselves. Why they want to be a part of the program, what has driven them to be there, and why they want to be a part of it. There was a lot of information shared tonight. Is there a way that we can access this video at a later time, or I can share it with my friends? Excellent last question there, Mr. Scott. Yes, yeah, so all this information, we, will, we are again recording tonight's uh, live event. It will be posted next Monday on the hcps.org slash school slash magnet website. Um, we will also have accompanying videos for all of the programs, uh, highlighting more detail, each of them available tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. If you go to the hcps.org slash school slash magnet website, you'll see a new link for YouTube videos to the CTE channel, highlighting each of the programs. Um, I will be also posting the PowerPoint that was shared this evening. Um, there's most of our information is readily available starting tomorrow morning on that HCPS slash schools slash magnet programs website. So on that note, I want to thank a few folks. I want to thank Mr. Scott for being the gentleman running the background, Ms. Katie Campbell, who's my curriculum specialist, who also assisted in getting the event off this evening all of our program coordinators for all their hard work and their dedication to the students and their programs. Um, and Mr. Jay Behrens, who is the videographer for Hartford County Public Schools, who put together all of our videos, uh, the video especially for this evening and all the videos that you will find accessible on the YouTube channel starting tomorrow morning. So last reminder, the application portal will open up on October 20th. Our open houses will be starting on October 21st. I encourage each and every one of you to try to attend the virtual open house for programs that you're interested in. If you're unable to get those, they will also be posted on the HCPS slash schools slash magnet programs website. And on that note, I want to wish everyone a good evening and thank you for coming.